Thank you very much, uh, Ken, and uh, thank you, the sponsors, for putting on this conference. It's a, it's a good day for a conference in a golf club when it's rainy outside. You can see all the golfers are inside here, so, uh, so it's a good way to, uh, to start. Basically, uh, we're going to talk here about, uh, about Novagreen, a startup company, and we're going to hit the, the, the four main points uh, about the disruptive innovation basically how we do it and the different types of feedstocks that we use. Uh, development in uh, Killam, Alberta, uh, green tech. Just going to touch on the whole aspect of food security. I think that Colin alluded to this in terms of we're going to need a whole lot more food fairly soon. And uh, Canada, along with a handful of others, will be one of the leading exporters of food that we're going to need. And then we're going to touch on the different types of uh, biomass feedstocks that we use. So when we look at the uh, disruptive innovation aspect with our technology, which is STEAM-based, basically, uh, we, we introduce uh, biomass into, uh, into uh, a chamber, put it under pressure, and the variables there is to know how much pressure and when to release the steam, and, and it basically breaks the molecular structure of the biomass, and then we break up the sugars and the cellulose and the lignans. But we can use virtually any uh, feedstock in the process, uh, everything from a eucalyptus to, uh, to aspen to corn stovers to, uh, to bagasse, so it's pretty inclusive. One other good thing about the biomass source is that it's more evenly dis, uh, distributed and what we really focus on is that we have the ability to use a number of different types of biomass inputs but we also get about four really good product outputs as well. So that's a real plus and of course with biomass things are pretty renewable. Oops, just want to go back here. So we're just going to go through this, this process here. This basically is Nova Green's extraction technology, sequential extraction technology or SET. You can see here in the corner the starting biomass in this particular case is Jerusalem artichoke. And we were at our test plot uh, a few days ago putting in uh, more uh, Jerusalem artichoke, uh, different type of species that we're going to be trying. And uh, it was sort of an interesting anecdote from the person that, all, that was on the tractor. Uh, he, he related the story about before GPSs came in, how farmers would get that straight line. And basically it was, you pick a cloud down the distance there and you keep your eye on the cloud, right? And if the cloud moves, he says, that really doesn't matter that much. You just, you just keep going, right? Coming back, you hope that there's a cloud on that end, right? And of course, if it's a cloudless day, then it's a good day for golf. But anyway, so we take the Jerusalem artichoke. We, we uh, first of all, we run it through our first process and we break out the inulin. And the inulin comes out of the stems. Uh, we can also take it out of the tubers. And you can see the various applications that, uh, that we have for the inulin. The uh, pet food application, of course, uh, not too far away here, Champion Pet Foods. They use inulin in their, uh, in their pet products. Livestock applications, and I think this, again, this touches on some of the points that Colin made and uh, a couple of other speakers. Uh, with the inulin, you have a much healthier animal. And of course that means reduced days on feed, you have reduced days on feed, then you can claim the carbon credit and there are protocols in place from Alberta Agriculture that, that actually support uh, reduced days on feed. And also the huge functional food market. After we get the inulin out, then we take and we break out the xylitol. From there it goes to the next step where we take out the, uh, the biochar, and the biochar goes back into the field. And you can see how this works. It's sort of this uh, symphony of activity, if you like. You know, I think only Beethoven could write a better symphony, right? But this is how 
This is how basically it works. It's this continuum of starting with the biomass, the applications, and then at the end you get the biochar, you put it back in the soil, and it keeps going on. You can see the biomass power here, the, the different uh, feedstocks, straw, wood, other biomass types that I talked about. But you see the, the different outputs that you can get. Uh, you get the xylitol, you get inulin, you get the lignans for different applications there, cellulose, you get the pellets, solid fuel, biochar, you get processed steam, district heating, etc., ethyl acetate, hydrogen, and of course with this you can get the carbon credits as well. <laughs> now, just looking at the markets here, uh, there's, uh, there's these uh, new applications and you can see that a number of major companies are getting on board, especially uh, with the inulin because of the claim for fiber. And here, right here, there's one where you see that Kraft Foods, I mean it's an icon in the fast food business, uh, nutritionally neutral foods, uh, that, you, that they, have in, they have put in inulin. And the claim that they're making here is that it's high fiber. But when you get some major companies stepping in, the markets for inulin in particular are just really expanding. And also, you see other major companies stepping in as well. Catelli, they have their smart pasta and uh, also used in, uh, in yogurts and Fiber One, et cetera. Xylitol, same thing, basically. Uh, a lot of major companies are, are getting more and more involved in, uh, in Xylitol, including uh, Kraft and a few others. And Xylitol is used for, you know, different, uh, different uh, applications, but, you know, you can go across the street to a place called Sweet Tweets. It's literally across the street. And she has a very nice business there, and she sells a number of products that use xylitol, okay? And so if you want, for lunch we can have the craft dinner, and then I'll pass out some of these after. But, but uh, a lot of different applications, and you see sort of the, the beneficial effects. Uh, xylitol is diabetic safe, and it does have a proven health and dental uh, record as well. As mentioned, the functional food side, exceptional growth, especially uh, on the fibers. Uh, the source on this is uh, Kellogg, and looking at 170 or 750 uh, percent increase between now and 2015. And with Novagreen, uh, where, where we're really stepping into the market here is that basically there are no domestic suppliers of, of inulin. Uh, most of the inulin in the world now comes uh, from, from a couple of big players. Orafti is one, and they use the chicory root, and they, uh, they source their inulin from different parts of Europe, where they grow chicory in France, Netherlands, parts of Belgium. And also, they put up a big facility in uh, Chile. So that's where most of the inulin comes in, uh, or comes from, and uh, about three major suppliers in the world. But we are, we are really advancing the ability to get inulin out of Jerusalem artichoke, and we just see this incredible opportunity here. The, uh, the market demand, just for example, Rafti, you know, just last year, uh, they put an 8% price increase on their product. The spin-off effect of, of taking biomass and doing the value add, the math here is pretty darn good. Uh, so you get those two big bales of straw in the field, not one but two. Okay, that's a metric ton. It's worth about $60. Depends how the farmer's feeling that day, but Usually it's about $60. And uh, when you run it through the value add process, the Novagreen process, you end up with about $750 in terms of value add. That's gross. And then also the other spin off is the rural renewal, where you have this four to one payoff in terms of the economic 
benefits for the community. I mean, we're not only doing the, the functional food side and the biochar and the activated carbon side, but also there's this whole sense of rural renewal that's taking place because you're taking a ton of straw, running it through a process, not only are you getting that value out in the marketplace, but also in the rural areas. And it also contributes very much to the domestic food supply. <coughs> just touching briefly here on green tech, this is uh, in Killam. It's just an exceptionally good location for, uh, for a number of reasons. Highway 36, of course, uh, goes up to Fort McMurray. And uh, the next slide will show that it's part of the Ports the Plain uh, corridor that's being uh, uh, championed and facilitated. And uh, from Fort McMurray, basically right down to Monterey, Mexico, Highway 13, another, another major highway. And the uh, CP Rail, of course, transnational, trans North America. And uh, Nova Green, in that green tech uh, area there, the 20 acres, uh, that's where we're going to be setting up. As mentioned, uh, the, the green tech has this incredible uh, uh, good location in terms of the trade corridor that's quickly developing uh, among uh, Canada, uh, the U.S., and Mexico. You see the, the stretch of how it starts near Fort McMurray there and uh, right down to, to Monterey, Mexico. Of course, the idea is they're probably going to be carrying more than just commodities. Uh, there may be other, other uh, you know, electricity, et cetera, et cetera. You know, just, it's basically a wedge uh, that's starting to develop to, to strengthen the trade uh, among, the, uh, among the countries. Two minutes? Okay. Uh, just briefly on the uh, food security side, uh, when you're dealing with the uh, with biomass and you're doing the value add, it helps to secure Canada's uh, strong uh, position for for food in the future. Uh, as mentioned, uh, by 20, 2020, there will be six major exporting countries: uh, Kazakhstan, Western Australia, France, Argentina. Canada and, uh, and uh, surprisingly the United States will not be one of them. So it's so important that we really help secure the food security for the country and in turn of course this, uh, this helps uh, you know other countries as well. And uh, when we look at that how it spins off into the sustained benefit for the rural renewal. And it's really important to keep the farms going because we've had a steep decline over the last 40 years. And of course, with fewer farmers, you have less food and less biomass. So that's why this particular technology is so incredibly important because it's not only about functional food, the biochar, and the activated carbon. It's also about getting renewal going on in rural areas. And that's absolutely crucial as Canada wants to secure its future in food production and supply. And just quickly, just wrapping up here, the disruptive innovation summary. As mentioned, it's superior end-to-end -end, uh, feedstock utilization, basically no waste. It's here in Alberta domestically. And there's the market for the products, in particular the inulin, growing very strongly and it's diversified. You can use different uh, biomass inputs and you get different types of outputs. And, and you can just see the product suite uh, that was in a previous slide in terms of, of what's possible by just taking biomass and doing the value add. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a question. Yes. What's the biggest barrier facing your success? Uh, I think the uh, equity market's pretty tight. Uh, the uh, the venture capital market's uh, very tight. 
Uh, the markets are there, no, no question about that. I mean, we've had interest from some really big players, especially on the Inland side, but it's just basically the capital. And I think what you were saying earlier about moving quickly, uh, that seems to be the new mantra, if you like, now. Like, fast track, fast track, fast track, fast track. And that wasn't the case, uh, you know, when we started a few years ago. But the investment community, I, I, I mean, I think if that starts to change, uh, I, think, I think you'll see an awful lot of activity. Great. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right.